the most common and widely used and the most important modality of the present day bronchoscope is EBUS. It is nothing but endobronchial ultrasound. In this modification, as I told you earlier, usually in a normal plane bronchoscope, only a camera will be present at the tip. But in this endobronchial ultrasound, along with the camera, there will be ultrasound transducer will be present at the tip. So, this works like a miniature ultrasound machine. What is the use of endobranchial ultrasound? The main use of endobranchial ultrasound is to diagnose mediastinal lymphadenopathy. So, this mediastinal lymphadenopathy, it is not accessible normally. In the good olden days where EVAS was not available, there used to be either if it is a subcarinal node that is station 7, there were used to be a blind lymph node of FNAC or there used to be mediastinoscope, a surgical procedure which was more invasive and more morbid associated procedure. When EBUS has introduced, we can directly go to a particular station where the lymph node is there. If the lymph node is greater than 1 centimeter, we can pass a needle or a biopsy forceps or a cryobiopsy for probe into the near node and then we can take the sample. The yield of EBUS guided biopsy or FNAC is up to 95 to 99 percent. So, besides mediastinal lymphadenopathy, it can also be used to diagnose any masses surrounding central lymph masses. That means, EBUS can only be used whenever the lesion is central, that is around the airways. If the lesion or the particular node is away from the central uh, part, then EBUS will not be of any use. In that case, CT guide biopsy will give results. So, coming back to EBUS. So, mediastinal lymphadenopathy is most commonly seen in tuberculosis, cancer, sarcoidosis and some other rare forms of infection like histoplasmosis, coccidiomycosis. In cancers also, lung cancer includes squamous cell carcinoma and lymphomas and various metastatic carcinomas are included. So, coming to uh, other uses, if there is any lung abscess which is very near to the central airway, you can drain the particular abscess or cyst through the EBUS port. So, how does getting the sample will increase the yield of a the procedure? Along with EBUS, we have to follow another thing is ROSE, Rapid On-Site Cytological Evaluation, wherein a pathologist along with the microscope and staining uh, methods, everything will be arranged bedside along the procedural bed. So, whenever the pulmonologist, when he collects the sample through EBUS, that will be immediately seen by the pathologist and he will say one is provisional diagnosis and the second one is adequacy of the sample. If the sample is not adequate, then the procedure needs to be continuous. The main advantage of this ROSE procedure combined with EBUS is that it saves a lot more time. The second one, it saves second time procedure that includes general anesthesia. The third time is a provisional diagnosis can come at the same moment as during the procedure. So, which with every procedure, there will always be some sort of complications associated. It is not necessary that every procedure includes complication, but a some, some point of time, some or other complication may arise in about 100 to 1000 patients, both in bronchoscope and EBUS. The most complication is bleeding. Whenever we do a procedure, whenever we puncture the airway or whenever we uh, take a biopsy, some sort of bleeding is common. That is very minimal and it can give control instantly. The second one is pneumothorax, which is very rare. Pneumomediastinum, it is also very rare, wherein air escapes from airways into lung or into the mediastinum. The fourth one is infection. Infection may spread if the bronchoscope instrument is not properly cleaned or maintained. Other uses, uh, other complications, sometimes patient may go into a respiratory arrest because of vasovagal attack and it is very, 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 very rare and bronchoscope along with EBUS is a very safe procedure and it is a very useful diagnostic modality. Thank you.